96 in the final of the FIBA America's Championship. You're listening to Dean Blundell and Company on Toronto Sports Radio, Sportsnet 590, The Fan. Dean Blundell and Company, you don't mess with a little young man, you'll get the horns. Now back at Dean Blundell and Company. That's just a straight shooter with our management written all over. On Toronto Sports Radio, Sportsnet 590, The Fan. Now John Gibbons is going to take Drew out of the game here, and the crowd already on its feet. Brett Cecil coming on. Three to one Blue Jays here in the Yankees seventh inning, and listen to the hand for Hutchison, and he deserves it. Did he ever? Drew Hutchison, uh, six and two thirds, three hits, one run. Didn't know what to do with that standing ovation, did he? He's like walking up, he's like, what do we do? I don't ever have one of these. He's he was just freaked out. These people cheering for me. They're cheering for me to come out of the game. They don't like me. What's going on? Are they cheering? I was going to be like, uh, did, I, uh, did I just blow up or something? It's just doctor happens. I no idea. Yeah. Uh, no, it was terrific. Uh, after the game said, yeah, I don't even listen to the media anymore. I just do my job. That's what I do. Here he is. When it comes to things that are out of my control, I don't really pay any attention to that, and I'm not going to, you know, talk about it. You know, I, I'm focused on, you know, what, what I can control, any of that's, you know, outside or any of that is, doesn't, doesn't, you know, have anything to do with me or what I need to do to prepare. Uh, you know, whenever I'm given the ball, I'm going to go out there and, and try to give an effort like I did today and help our team win. Yeah, did he ever? He was spectacular. Has been now for the past little while, uh, specifically at home. Uh, I think he said closing in on air around two at home, still over nine on the road. Uh, read yesterday, too, that they're probably going to just try and give as many starts at home as they possibly can may not be a terrible idea as well i wish it made sense dean i really do i wish there was something we could say well you know he, he just likes he likes starting the game he likes pitching the top of the first or there was some something we could put our finger on because there isn't and it makes no sense because it was the complete opposite last year he was great on the road and allows you to get home and i'm the opposite i don't know what happens or what gets into a guy like that either right but you, if you really think about where where he's at on the road with an ERA closer to 10 than it is to 8, yeah, uh, which still ain't good. No, it's and, and, and then he gets home and he's got an ERA of around 2. Yeah. Uh, his whip is great at home as well. Um, he's as dominant as he was yesterday. Three hits over uh, six and two thirds, pitches into the seventh. Uh, he, he really was spectacular. I mean, he answers a lot of questions at all. But when he goes down the road, and then you know, either get road hush or home hush, you know, you wonder what it is that, that gets into a guy's head or what, what he struggles with, what's between his ears. Well, that has to be it, right? It has to be a mental thing. It's not a physical thing. It, it has to be entirely mental. Um, and maybe the Blue Jays should take a page out of the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs playbook here and just hiring as, as many people, getting as many people on the payroll as possible. They need some, like, sports psychologists yeah. on this team to, to figure them out. Like a shrink or two. You know, one, one guy I'm happy, they, 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 I call it addition by subtraction. Yesterday, uh, they auctioned Aaron Loop. Here's uh, John Gibbons. Basically, it's, it, it, he needs to go down and pitch and, and get on a little, little program. Not, uh, and, I, and I told him, too, it won't be one of those ones that you go down and pitch according to the game. If they need you, whatever, would you tell them, hey, you know, a one inning and maybe an every other day type thing, just to, just to find it again because he's been sitting so long. Yeah, he's been sitting so long because you've uh, added so many great arms to the bullpen. You brought, of course, Sanchez back. He pitches out of the bullpen. Mark Lowe is here as well, and he was terrific on the weekend. Uh, it, but you can't have a guy like that coming in and going, oh, yeah, I'm going to lose my job if I don't pitch well because then he's pins and needles and he, and he throws meatball after meatball. Not that he didn't do it in the beginning of the year when no one was threatening his job because there was no way he should should be in a game that's not a blowout. Absolutely, either way, absolutely no way he should have pitched on the weekend as well. Well, it's kind of, we're, we're also glossing over the fact that, yeah, he had options and, and the Blue Jays were running an eight-man pen out there, and this is a move that could have been made to save Danny Valencia's job, right? Like, if, yeah. if the Blue Jays option Aaron Loop, which would have been totally understandable at the time because you already have your one lefty in, in Brett Cecil, and yeah, you, you like to have two lefties, but you're you're not upset about, you know, throwing Mark Lowe or Aaron Sanchez against left-handed hitters. If they option Aaron Loop, you don't have to DFA Danny Valencia, and that's a big bat, uh, especially against left-handed pitchers. We know that. Uh, this team hits left-handed pitchers pretty well any, either way, but yeah. Uh, Danny Valencia could easily still be a Blue Jay if, uh, if this move was made a couple of weeks ago. What's the thinking there? I, honestly, I was shocked 